Hey everybody, this is Kathy, the Hopeful Artist, and in this video, I'm making a really cute Halloween-inspired cat watercolor painting. It's in my watercolor sketchbook, which is cold-pressed, 40-pound, I think, paper. It's very thick, very heavy. It's great for watercolors and gouache. And I wanted to do something with cats. So I've been taking some classes online by Terry Runyon. I'll put the links in the description. I have her book. She's amazing. And she's really inspiring me and many others to do some fun cat art. And I love cats. I have a cat named Luna. She's awesome. So they're always fun to paint. Um, I think I love doing animals. They're a lot of fun. And you can, you can do so many different kinds of things. So I wanted to do a cat that's kind of dressed up like um, a ghost was kind of inspired by Charlie Brown a little bit here, one of my favorite holiday specials. And I wanted to show the cat dressed up, getting ready to go trick-or-treating for the night. And I'm using uh, orange here, which is one of my favorite colors to paint with. These are Windsor and Newton watercolor, um, uh, watercolors that come in a tube. And these are the watercolors Terry uses that she recommended. These are professional grade. And I've wanted to get them for a while, but I was a little hesitant because they're not cheap. They're like $15 a tube. But I just went and bit the bullet one day and bought about 10 of them and went a little crazy. But let me tell you, they're the most amazing watercolors I've ever used. I can see why she likes them. And a little goes a long way. These tubes will last you a long, long time, even if you use them every day. You could probably get six months out of them. Obviously, some colors, if you use them more, it's going to be a little less. But you just put a little dot and you can really stretch it out. I like these watercolors because if you take them right out of the tube with just a little, little bit of water, they're very opaque. And I like opaque watercolors. That's my preference. Or you can thin them out as much as you need to. I also, uh, later on, I'm going to use some white gouache mixed with them and that works perfectly well too you can use white gouache with them to make them even more opaque lighten them up a little bit i've never used watercolors out of a tube like this i usually use them like in a tray and these are definitely better and uh, more uh, versatile as far as that goes as far as mixing in my opinion and they're definitely more saturated a higher quality for sure I wanted to make the cat orange, like an orange tabby, to kind of juxtapose the orange bag. I like to have balance in my pieces when it comes to composition and color. So you'll see that a lot. If I have orange on one side, I'll, I'll put it on the other side or, you know, catty corner with each other. Or, you know, I'm going to uh, do yellow a little bit later and, and balance that out throughout the whole piece. Okay, so here I painted a cloud with the white gouache because I was going to do kind of a daytime thing. And then I thought, no, it really needs to be at night. So um, this is my Prussian blue, which is my favorite blue ever to paint with. And um, I mixed it with a little bit of the white gouache here. So I decided here I'm going to do a nighttime sky. And whenever I do nighttime scenes, I always use Prussian blue for the sky. It's a beautiful dark blue. I was painting around the clouds and then eventually... Pretty soon I'm going to give up and just paint over the clouds. I thought, you know what, I'll just add clouds in later. And then I decide to just forego the clouds completely. Painting around clouds is really hard for me. Lots of curves. And I don't know, I just have a difficult time with that. So this is the Prussian blue. It's gorgeous. I think it's really great, like I said, for the nighttime sky. If you want to lighten it up, add some white gouache to it, which I do on the next page which also gives a beautiful effect. You can make it as light as you want, but I just think it's a beautiful color. It's really rich, like a jewel tone, really saturated. And this is a watercolor, keep in mind, that I'm using here, mixing it with the gouache. And you can see how mixing it with a white gouache makes it even more opaque, and it looks almost like an acrylic or, you know, like a gouache, which it is kind of the base on that. The watercolors have a little more translucent, uh, translucentness to them. You can see the little shinier, a little more see-through, um, which is fine. But still, these colors are very saturated and rich, which is amazing. And I'm just going in and touching up a few things here. 
and I'm gonna finish that up. When I do watercolors, a lot of people use hair dryers to dry in between the stages and that's perfectly fine. I really don't do that. Um, I just let it kind of dry for an hour or two, maybe a day. Now, instead of the clouds, I decided to go kind of with a Starry Night inspired sky. I had just seen a documentary on the Starry Night by Van Gogh recently, and it's one of my favorite paintings. And I thought, you know what, maybe that'll be kind of fun. It's obviously not the Starry Night or the quality of that, but it was inspired by that with the swirls. And I wanted to kind of have fun with that. So um, I kind of knew where I was going with that. Um, and I'll finish that up in a little bit. Here I am just outlining the cat with his costume. So that stands out a little bit. And just using this marker pen, this inking pen to fill in the details of that ghost costume. I probably, looking at it now, would have, should have painted his arms coming out of the costume somehow, and now that I'm looking at it, I kind of wish I did that, but I just didn't think of that, but that's okay. Um, maybe next time I do it, if I do it again. So I took a Posca pen here, went over these swirls with the white paint pen, which went beautifully on this watercolor. Make sure it's completely, completely dry, though, before you add any kind of paint pens to it. But um, it went over it really, really nicely, and I grabbed another paint pen to kind of outline uh, just some of the fine details here, so that stood out a little bit. Both worked really well. There were a couple areas I had to go over it more than once, but both paint pens worked really well on these Windsor Newton watercolors. I was really surprised by that. Sometimes it'll seep into the paper because it's a very porous paper, the paint pen, and it just disappears. That did not happen with this. They really just sat on the surface and I think looked great. I wanted to do the moon in yellow because I wanted to bring a third color into this piece and just have it pop a little bit. So I decided, okay, I'll go with the yellow. Again, I'm still inspired by the starry night here because he has a lot of blue and yellow in that piece. And uh, in the sky is lots of blues and yellows. So I thought, okay, I'll just stick with the Van Gogh inspiration here with the yellow. And I'm going to bring this um, throughout the stars here uh, and add that little centerpiece right there to kind of bring that yellow throughout the composition which is something I'd like to do, bring a color throughout the whole piece. And then I added some yellow shine to the costume as if it's reflecting off of that, that moon is reflecting off of that sheet. You have to remember when you paint a crescent moon, there's nothing in that area where that empty space is in that moon because the moon is still there. Some people paint stars inside that area. No, there's still a moon there. The moon doesn't get cut in half, it's just the darks that's just darkened that's also please keep that in mind when you do your crescent moons i've made that mistake many many times and then i realized wait there's a moon there why would there be stars on top of the moon that doesn't make sense okay so when i did the ground i wanted to do grass and i always like to add a little bit of yellow into the green that's just my preference plus I want to yellow it up a little bit to kind of go with the yellow of the moon and uh, just a little bit just a touch and uh, I'm gonna go in here just to make it like he's standing outside getting ready to go out trick-or-treating for the night and also looking at it again if I could change things I would probably add a second cat like he has a friend which would have been fun and maybe dress him up like a vampire or something so I think I'm gonna do another cat inspired Halloween piece like this and maybe add a second or third cat and just do a different type of look to it like they're all going trick-or-treating I think that would be rather fun and uh, I did sign this a little prematurely I do that all the time and then I'll look at it and decide oh wait let me let me add this so what I'm gonna do here is just add a few uh, shadows add some Prussian blue to the green just to darken it up a little bit anyway guys thanks so much for watching this is my cute little cat inspired terry runyon inspired halloween painting with windsor newton watercolors thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video happy halloween